So this is it, the infamous Creality K1, the printer that's been ruffling everyone's feathers. Let's go! By the time this review comes out, I think most of you are already quite familiar with this machine, so I won't waste a lot of time introducing it. It's Creality's answer to a certain other company's enclosed printer. And I'm not talking about Flashforge. Might as well show you them side by side. I don't have a P1P, which I think was the, the true aim of the K1, although the K1 is enclosed, so I think they were kind of aiming between the two, really. And they've hit a price point lower than the two, so that has put the cat among the pigeons. Obviously the K1 is not a multi-material printer, and as far as I can tell, it doesn't have any provision for that. It's lacking a way to cut the filament in the hot end. It's a Core XY direct drive mechanism, and yes, it is direct drive. They've obviously done a great job in the Portal 2 style hot end here at hiding the extruder because I've heard a lot of people, even in my comments in previous videos, they think it's a Bowden printer with the extruder off at the back. It's not. Um, the extruder is on the hot end. We'll, we'll poke in there in a bit. The bed is held on three Z screws and that means no bearings. And it's a magnetic surface that comes with an A plate and only an A plate. One must be led to assume that a B plate might be coming later, perhaps with the still awaited Max version of the printer. The A plate is almost identical to the PLA side of the bed that comes with the X1. By almost, I mean literally identical. These could have come from the same factory, maybe they did. I don't know of any other printers that use this surface, but it's actually really good. I'll talk about that in a minute. As you can see, the other parts in the Core XY mechanism include the steel X rods. There's huge steppers at the back with big pulley wheels on them. That sort of acts like gearing up. It means that the printer can move faster for the same amount of steps. Uh, it's got a really good light inside it, and it's got the incredibly panoramic glass case. Aesthetically speaking, this might be one of the best looking printers we've seen in the consumer market, and it might remain the best looking printer through 2023. It's kind of like a display cabinet that prints. Back to the bed, as you can see if you read the top, it says to use glue stick, and the bamboo one actually says the same. They're not kidding, you do need to use glue stick on this surface. If you fail to use glue stick, it means you can damage the surface trying to remove the part. It's also a semi-disposable surface. Uh, the bamboo came with two spare stickers to put on the steel subsurface, the plate, if you need to replace the oven tray style finish. They're pretty hard wearing and mine is still going strong after, I guess, maybe we've got to about 100 prints now. Uh, but it does mean that eventually after maybe, I don't know, 200 prints, you might need to replace this sheet. There's two fairly obvious omissions to anyone who has reviewed or owns an X1C. Firstly, where's the glue stick? I think it would be worth including one because you need one. I've had glue sticks included in printers with PEI sheets that, that don't need them, so it does seem kind of silly not to throw one in. Free advertising for bamboo is the price of not including a Creality glue stick, I guess. Oh well. Secondly, the best tool to get parts off this bed, and I'm not kidding here, it's the best tool by quite some margin, is the blade tool that bamboo included in the X1C. They sent the blade and a file to print and a couple of screws. I'm hopefully showing you on screen how well this works. You won't get anywhere near this kind of performance from a plastic or metal scraper and that would cause extreme frustration with this bed if you didn't realize that the key to it working is to use this tool. Again, nothing like this is included and in my opinion it should be, but otherwise, aside from rants about non-included items, this bed is perfectly fine and it's really well suited to this kind of printer. Stuff really sticks, it's better at holding parts than PEI, it's more reliable, it has less spaghetti errors. The only price you have to pay is that you constantly have to use glue with it. As far as print quality goes, well, I don't see any issues. We've got a bed test print first, which is fine. I know some people have had problems with their first layer, but nothing here. This is perfectly fine. My calibration print... um. That also looks really good. You can see the bridging is insanely good inside there. That's actually probably the best I've seen, actually. And overhangs and the two thin spikes here, they're really good too. This all points to the same thing, which is superior cooling, which is clearly down to the huge curtain fan at the side. The quality you're getting on prints is 
much better than usual, and this is almost certainly down to the cooling. But also, on the flip side, nearly all the prints I've printed have um, VFAs, which is the fine artifacts. I'll try to show them on screen. I don't know if it's coming from the extruder, we'll look at that in a minute, or whether it's coming from the larger pulley wheels on the steppers that I just showed you. It um, remains a mystery, and it's really not uncommon. I've, I've seen it on a lot of printers. I had printed this wrench on the bamboo a couple of days ago, and I was seriously impressed at how it came out. This is an actual working wrench. You can increase the number of walls to make it stronger. It's really clever, and I thought it would be a good challenge for the K1, since it came out working perfectly from the X1C first time. And the K1 managed it perfectly first time too, so that is a decent indication that print accuracy is good, and there's not too much slop or over-extrusion that are causing things to unnecessarily fuse together. I've also tried a few other challenging prints on the machine, and it has zero problems with them, and most of the reason is because things are sticking to the bed as they should. As you can see, stuff uh, comes off the printer working, and that is quite unusual um, to not have to at least do some post-processing on these kind of print-in-place parts. So, my unit prints fine, but what's going on with other people's? I'm not oblivious to the fact that there's a lot of people criticising this machine, and I'm not entirely sure, and I'm not in a position to be entirely sure, because I'm not seeing issues, but most of them seem to revolve around the extruder. Pun unintended. Creality actually sent me a spare extruder, which I've confirmed is exactly the same as the original. Um, sending a spare extruder is a new one by me, but I'll take it. It saves me having to disassemble the existing one. This is probably the smallest extruder I've seen, and it's very, very custom. Compare it to the extruders Creality was making in 2020-ish on, say, the Ender 3 V2, and you can see there's quite a difference. The problem is that, or at least the problem seems that it might have been too ambitious. It's pretty pointless for me to comment any further though, because my unit is still working fine after something like 50 hours of printing time, but that is a guess because, well, this takes me to the next point, which I wish I didn't have to go into. This is Clipper on board the printer. If you've used Clipper, then you probably would recognize that from the interfaces, especially if you stick the IP address into a browser and you get greeted with mains reality print. There's two problems here. Firstly, this is breaking Clipper and Mainsail's licenses. But even if you're willing to skip past that minor detail, it's crippling the printer. Let me explain. This is the Elegoo Neptune 4. It doesn't look like it runs Clipper, but it runs Clipper. You can plug this into a wired network and you can access Fluid to do it, like, like so. You can configure it using the Fluid -d -d interface using these tabs down the side. Where's the tabs on Creality's version? Conspicuously absent, that's, that's where. So you can't configure anything. You can't even configure basic stuff like acceleration or square corner velocity. I get that Creality don't want you to do that, but this is a clipper machine. It's supposed to be configurable. So, there are many ways to send a print to a Clipper printer, and I normally use Cura, but the same applies to Prusa Slicer. You connect to the printer using Moonraker. I don't really want to explain that, as I did it two videos ago, I'll link in the corner, but this is using the Clipper API. Uh, that's how you send prints to Clipper from Cura and Prusa Slicer. Unless you have a K1, because Creality have blocked external access to Moonraker. I did some digging around and they use HTTP transfer to send their print using Creality Print. So what this effectively means is that you either use the Creality Print ecosystem, or you have to slice the file and then upload it manually, or use a USB stick. Now, I've heard down the grapevine that Creality plan to open source the K1, but this is sort of feeling like a little too late. This needs to be done four weeks ago or whatever, and to my understanding, we need to be given full access to the source and to the machine. This is something that, frankly, I can't even understand. Users are crying out for Clipper printers, and Clipper is a selling point on printers in 2023, so it makes zero sense to hide it, and it makes zero sense to lock it down. 
If you want to see it done right, or at least more right, then look at what Eligo is doing, and look at what Sovol is doing. The Neptune 4 is a printer that has an identical UI to the Neptune 3, um, and that was Marlin. So if they can manage to implement Clipper properly, or at least without breaking the licenses, presumably, then I'm sure Creality can too. And I really hope that this criticism is taken on board and that Creality sorts this out, because as far as I can tell, they absolutely can. Anyway, after that rant, let's open up the bottom and have a look at the inside. So what Creality have done here is they've used a different chipset to usual. This is MIPS architecture, I believe, instead of ARM. Consequently, there are different chips here than we're used to seeing. Well, except for the usual ARM-based MCU, apparently the Giga device chip is indispensable. Everything seems fine and normal otherwise in here. It's interesting to see how the three screws work with the tensioner and the belt there. We've got ferrules and we've got earthing, so that all seems okay, at least on the surface. Uh, we also have a tool headboard, which I will show you as I did open this up to check Thermal Runaway. Thermal Runaway does work, make of that what you will. So I think that's probably about it for the K1 for now. I, I doubt this will be the last I show you of it, but it is the end of this review. To summarise, I think this is a surprisingly well-engineered machine, albeit potentially with a few mistakes that aren't too surprising considering the huge leap between, say, the S1 series and this. I do think that Creality have outdone themselves and they've brought us something that is way beyond what we might have expected from from Creality. But at the same time, what's stopping it from being a great machine is the choices they have made that hopefully they will reconsider. I think that the machine is currently selling well, as you would expect from a Creality, and rightly so. Everything I've printed on it has turned out to be as high quality as the bamboo that it's trying to compete with. But I think with the right approach to Clipper, it would signal to users that this isn't a proprietary machine, but a moddable one. And it would also kind of signal that Creality are with the community rather than against it, if that makes sense. It would put the machine on a whole new level, and that feels like an opportunity so far missed. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I don't know why I have to say this for Creality reviews. They seem to attract certain types of comments. Keep it civil. If you don't, I will be deleting comments, obviously. Will you buy one? Will you buy one if they solve the clipper issues? Are you waiting for the Max? Are you waiting for the camera? Let me know. I will see you next time for probably the Neptune 4. Thank you for watching.